welcome to the ADB Thailand Times, a series of conversations about sustainable finance. In the last episode, we talked about how ADB helps set up sustainable finance ecosystem in Thailand. Today, we will have an opportunity to deep dive into how that ecosystem is being built. Joining us today are two very special guests. Uh, let me first welcome Kun Jom Kwan Kong Skun, Assistant Secretary General of the Security and Exchange Commission of Thailand. The second guest uh, I would like to welcome Kun Go Sin Phun So Phun, Financial Sector Specialist, you know, from the ADB. So what do you have? Okay, how are you guys doing today? Yeah, good. really good for me. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, <laughs> if if I may uh, have Kun Go Sin take the first question, you know, in the last uh, episode we talking about a sustainable finance, and which I have a sense that. You know, it, it, this this segment is something that up and coming. A lot of people is paying attention about it, um, but we didn't have a chance to really deep dive into what that sustainable financing or sustainable finance is all about, right? Can you give us a little bit of what sustainable finance are and why is it so important for us to take a look at it and participate in it now more than ever? Okay, so sustainable finance is all about how we allocate the capital or allocate the investments. Um, to projects or to um, investments that contribute positively to the environmental and the social development. So you might heard about the word ESG, environmental, social, and governance. So ESG can be incorporated by all kind of stakeholders. And today we talk about um, you know how capital market um, can support sustainable finance market development. So from investors point of view, um, it's a matter of integrating ESG into the investment making decisions. They will, need, they will be looking at um, you know, investing opportunities in um, companies that issue all kinds of securities um, you know, that considers um, environmental and social, for example, green bonds, social bonds. And of course, you know, from issuer's point of view, the one who is issuing the securities, is about how to integrate ESG into their business operations. For example, when they come up with new projects, how do they assess whether that project has an impact on the environment or how that project has an impact on the social or um, you know, the, um, the neighborhood where they are operating in. So it's just a matter of ensuring that whatever they do, whatever the investors do, whatever the issuers do, whatever we do, um, actually contribute positively to the environmental and social development. And to your second question, um, you know, why it is important right now, why it is very, very urgent right now. Uh, my short answer is because there are lots of you know, massive investment needs. Um, it is estimated that um, you know, for ASEAN itself, we need about two hundred billion um, of annual investments um, in green projects. And where do we get the money from, right? Um, the government has limited capacity. They can allocate a certain portion of their budget um, for infrastructure development. So it is important that we also mobilize the, um, the funding or the capital from the private sector. How do we do that? Right? So it's just a matter of um, you know, making the projects, making the instruments, more financially viable that can attract um, investment from the uh, private sectors. How MDBs like ADBs um, you know, can provide the support um, to the ASEAN governments and also to the ASEAN corporate issuers to make sure that um, sustainable finance is um, sort of you know, mainstream. And this is super important because um, as I said, um, there are lots of funding needs and we don't have the money, right? So we just need to make sure that we can mobilize the capital and also at scale. I think the key word is at scale because we don't have much time left, right? We cannot afford to um, you know, invest or to consider project by project. What we really need to do is how we can mobilize the funding so that it can support multiple projects um, at, the t at the same time. Thank you very much, Kap. I think the second question is to Kun Jong Kwan. Um, what I heard just now is that you know, this is all about mobilizing uh, financial resources, you know, for the investor and for the issuers, so that they can interact and invest and build some kind of impact, positive impact to the societies, particularly urgently because of climate change, right? I'm pretty sure that, you know, by ensuring that all these players are coming together and work together, the ecosystem cannot be left built by default, but have to be by design. Mm -hmm. If one were to build, to have to build an ecosystem, you know, for sustainable finance, how would one start and who should be part of it? Actually, for, for the SEC Thailand, uh, I would say that the sustainability agenda has been our top priority and our key flagship. 
But of course, we cannot, you know, do this alone. We need the actions of our key stakeholders in the, in the ecosystem to move towards um, the same direction. So uh, for SEC Thailand, what we have done so far is that we try to strengthen uh, the key drivers, uh, both in terms of supply and the demand side, uh, to you know uh, strengthen the, the sustainability ecosystem. Starting from the supply side, uh, we have what we call the CT code, the corporate mm -hmm. governance code, to help our listed company to understand and build up their own uh, corporate governance uh, in, in their company. And also, we require them to disclose, uh, because it just mentioned earlier, that uh, we require them to disclose the um, ESG responsibilities on their annual report. We call that the one report. And, and on that report, they have to disclose how they integrate the ESG responsibilities in their uh, business uh, strategy and, and also the mm -hmm. operation. And also, last but not least, we encourage the firms to, you know, issue the ESG bonds. I'm talking about the uh, green bond, uh, social bond, uh, sustainability bonds, and also the, the SLB, the sustainability link bonds. And uh, not only we, we waive the relating fee, but we also have uh, a person like ADB and also CBI supporting us on uh, providing the technical assistance for our local reviewers. So thank you ADB for that. For our local firms, the overseas uh, reviewers is quite expensive for them mm. and they are very hard to find, very hard to access. So, so with that helping, uh, I think it's, 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 it's very good for our uh, local uh, firms to, to you know, issue those kind of bonds. And, you know, uh, that, that's for the supply side. Strengthen the supply side alone is useless if investors don't care about that. We need the market force from, from the investor. We need the demand from the investor. So what we have tried uh, to do is that we have the investment stewardship code for the uh, institutional investor and we encourage our institutional investors to adopt this code. They have to do some kind of uh, integrate the ESG factors in that investment decision making process. And also, uh, we need to create visibility for the ESG mm -hmm. products, the ESG bonds that I just mentioned. So, we have the Thai Bond Market Association uh, that uh, they, they help us on providing the the visibility, uh, the bulletin platform where the demand can meet with the supply so that our investor can find uh, insight and in-depth information about the, ES, uh, about the EST bonds on that, that platform. That's what we done for the, the demand side. So in conclusion, I think we have observed a remarkable milestones on both uh, demand and the supply side of our ecosystem. Having heard from Kun Jong Kwan, you know, there seems to be a lot of early achievement you know that the regulator have, have accomplished so far you know from giving out the right directions clear directions you know guardrails standards and, and even you know create opportunity for for matchmaking right for for adb um, could you give us you know, a few example of the real life you know uh, uh, products that are already in the market and how adb is actually help promoting those products I, I agree that we have seen that the regulators have already done a lot. Some of those um, you know, uh, activities that we are currently doing um, is actually aligned with the SEC's um, policies. Uh, for example, uh, we um, you know, collaborated uh, with the uh, local credit rating company um, called Twist Rating um, to become a local green bond verifier for, for Thai issuers, issuing bonds in Thailand. And we think that this is um, you know, very um, you know, important because Often the case, um, you know, for Thai companies to issue a green bond or social bonds, they would need to engage um, international reviewers. Of, you know, and of, of course, you know, they need to speak in English. They need to provide all the documents or the evidences, um, you know, in English. We could be, um, you know, cumbersome for them. So having someone um, on the ground working in the same country, in the same time zone, um, you know, speak the same language, mm -hmm. um, that can you know, help them throughout the issuance process. I think that that will be very useful, and uh, we are we are thankful to Twist Rating, um, you know, for um, you know agreeing um, and also for the effort to to become the first local um, green bond verifier, 
and of course they are accredited by the Climate Bonds Initiative. So this is very important because um, you know, with that we can incorporate or we can import international practices into the local markets. So I think this is very important and we have been working with SEC and with Swiss Betting uh, for the past few years. Mm. And another example that I would like to, to, to share um, is about um, our work with the Government Savings Bank um, you know, to issue a social bond in June this year. So um, there, there, I would say there, there are two um, you know, key elements to this. Uh, we supported the GSB um, you know, with the framework development um, because um, the GSB is simply, um, I would say, it's almost like a peer play social bond issuer because most of their products are to support the, um, the low-income households, um, to address the informal debt issues and also provide very competitive um, you know, interest rate loans um, to small income or low income earners. So we help them with the framework and at the same time we also discuss with GSB whether they could provide um, some sort of um, you know, social deposit schemes mm -hmm. for the existing depositors. Because as you may know, um, you know issuing bonds, bond is mainly for large investors, institutional investors, high net worth investors. But how about you know, individual uh, depositors, individuals like us? Um, you know, some of them may want to be part of that journey. Some of them may want to contribute to environmental and social development. And they don't have the products. Right? So for a bank to come up with a social deposit product for their existing customers, where the banks promise that those deposits will only be used to support social projects. So this could be another area, hopefully, to see um, in the local market. Having heard you know, all this wonderful conversation, I personally feel that finally you know, the, the sustainable bonds market or, or we call ESG bonds market is, is firmly established you know, in Thailand and probably you know, across uh, Southeast Asia as well. Uh, key to it is able to mobilize you know, all the financing to help advance you know, our sustain, sustainable goals. Right? And, and most importantly, help everybody you know, in this part of the world able to mitigate against you know, climate change and also adapt to the climate change as well. So thank you so much for your time and all the knowledge you passed today. Thank you, Kapko. Thank you.